is CNN. My interview last night with Corey Knowlton has erupted into a very heated debate. He's the hunter who paid $350,000 for the right to hunt and kill a rare black rhino. A lot of people are outraged about it. He came on the show to explain his side. How do you justify what you have done? Well, I justify it in the name of conservation. I justify it in a uh, belief system and sustainable use. I'm very knowledgeable and very educated on the subject about what's going on. Uh, the money's needed. I think I got a long list of justifications. Join me now, two men on opposite sides of this question. Jeff Flocken, the Regional Director of North America for the International Fund for Animal Welfare. And John Jackson is Chairman and President of Conservation Force. He facilitated the auction and asked Corey Knowlton to bid. Welcome to both of you. Uh, Jeff Flocken, let me go to you first. What was your reaction to the interview with Corey Knowlton last night and his justification for what he's doing? I'd say I strongly disagree. This is a case of a bunch of wealthy Americans auctioning off the right to kill a rare species, one of the last of a critically endangered animal, and trying to pass it off as conservation, which couldn't be further than the truth. Okay, uh, John Jackson, you're supportive of Corey Knowlton. Why? Uh, this is what it's all about. It's a fundamental principle of conservation that you have to have revenue and you have to incentivize the local people. All wildlife conservation has to be done on a local level. This is not a, uh, it's a disingenuous to suggest this is anything other than a conservation initiative uh, to maximize revenue for the conservation of the species. What I just cannot stomach, and what seems to enrage so many people, is the trophy hunting element of what he does. If you look at his Facebook pages, they're covered and littered with pictures of great animals with him beaming away next to them with his guns, proudly celebrating killing them. And he presumably, he didn't deny this, intends to do exactly the same thing with this uh, rare endangered black rhino. And it's that glorifying in the killing that really distresses people. Why do, you, why do people need to do that and why would you go along with that? Hunters have a very special relationship with the animals they pursue. Uh, only uh, hunters know the hunting relationship. Or it's an old uh, relationship, the old, oldest mankind, a very important one. They, are, uh, they know the wildlife they pursue like no one else. And they also are the stewards. Uh, Conservation Force, my organization, is in a business, so to speak. It's a nonprofit public charity that's in the business of using hunting as a force for the conservation of animals. We uh, uh, support what we call conservation hunting, tweaking the hunting program so that they generate greater special benefits like revenue and local incentives to save the species. This is what it's all about. In answer to my direct question, are you comfortable with the prospect of Corey Knowlton posing next to the dead black rhino with a big grin on his face uh, and his weapon of choice to kill it and then posting that on social media. Are you comfortable with that? I am. He's the one paying the bill and this is a way of uh, memorializing the experience, capturing it. That's just one of the ways. It's uh, better than the memory and uh, it will help uh, revitalize, uh, refresh the memory about the whole experience. Okay, Jeff Flocken, in terms of the validity of a hunter's right to hunt the black rhino, particularly the elderly black rhinos who no longer have a breeding use and who would perhaps be culled anyway, that certainly seems to be the suggestion that's not been um, disputed. What is actually wrong in having it hunted in this particular way compared to any other way? This is the case of a critically endangered species being hunted for trophy. The message that it's sending the world is that this animal is worth more dead than alive. And that's the reason that it's in the current crisis it's in. The animal is being poached at a horrific rate for its horn, which is valued in traditional Asian medicines as well as curios like ashtrays or statutes. And the reason it's so valued is because it's rare. A trophy hunt that makes a spectacle of auctioning off the right for a wealthy foreigner to kill one is only saying that's another reason why it's worth more dead than alive. And this animal has okay, tremendous but, but, but let me Okay, but let me pick you up, Jeff Flocken, on that mm -hmm. point. If you remove the ugliness of the photographic memory stuff that goes on with social media and to stick to the actual killing of this black rhino which would probably be killed anyway what is the sensible argument against it 
Well, first of all, there are scientists who can clearly dispute the need to kill this individual animal. They're saying that it's non-reproductive. Well, there are many scientists who say that we don't know how long a rhino is going to be reproductively important to the herd. It has a place in the social structure and the safety, particularly the dominant older males. Additionally, it has a value to the herd in that, or to, sorry, the revenue of African nations and that it's a draw for ecotourism. Ecotourism raises millions more than hunting or a one-off hunt that kills the animal and takes it out of the natural environment will ever raise. So the claim that it has to be culled or has to be killed, I'm not buying it. And there are many scientists and conservationists and economists who agree with me on this. Okay, John Jackson, he's not buying it. Why is he wrong? Uh, he's not the expert. The uh, IUCN uh, African Rhino Specialist Group, the largest uh, conservation body in the world, is the expert. 177 nations of CITES and their scientific authorities that are determined and this is in the best interest of the rhino are the authorities. The uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has to make two different determinations by two different divisions and they are the authorities. They've found that it enhances the survival of the species and it's not detrimental. Uh, there is uh, uh, there's a, uh, virtually all the experts and uh, all, all the leading organizations and the Ministry of the, uh, uh, of the uh, Environment and Tourism in Namibia have determined this is the best thing to do. Let me ask you finally then, if Corey Knowlton suddenly had a dramatic change of mind and said to you, I don't want to kill this black rhino, it's an endangered species, only 5,000 left in the world, so I want to keep them all alive, but I will, because I'm so dedicated to cons conserving these animals, I will give you a check for $350,000 and you can do with that whatever you wish. I mean, that would surely be a more preferable state of affairs than having this wealthy American hunter go over there, track it down, kill it, and then pose for his rather ugly trophy photographs. Uh, if you ask me, the, the question is, it's best that this rhino be eliminated because it's dangerous to the other animals, the calves and the cows and the young productive bulls. But we'll accept this $350,000. We asked Corey to do this for conservation of the species. This is about conservation, not his uh, uh, personal hunting interests. He didn't want, uh, do this. We asked him to do it. And uh, we would accept his $350,000. We'll accept anybody's $350,000. We're a public charity. Uh, we'll accept any dedicated donation that's in it. Okay, will you pose for the picture with him when he's posing proudly by the dead rhino? Uh, well, uh, if he survives the encounter, uh, I'll, I'll congratulate him for knowing the rhino as only a hunter can do. But would you pose with him for the picture if he asked you to? I certainly would. You would? Okay, well I think we both know the, the most likely outcome is not that Corey Knowlton won't survive, but that the black rhino won't survive. But anyway, uh, John Jackson, yeah. Jeff Flocken, thank you both very much for joining us. When we come back, too many know all there is to know about reinventing yourself in the political spotlight. Kennedy Cousins, Christopher Lawford and Patrick Kennedy, their unexpected advice for beleaguered Chris Christie. What happens when Hollywood tells your story? Piers sits down with the real-life Wolf of Wall Street. Did DiCaprio get it right? What about the victims? Even if you haven't seen the movie, you won't want to miss this. Piers Morgan Live, Monday night at 9 on CNN.